you spin and you win. Hi, Scissor in here with another build guide for 3.13 and this time featuring Cyclone Slayer, uh, an old time favorite and a bit of a classic. And uh, I'll be talking about how we're, you can like, you can level and start early with Resolute Technique doing non-crit. And then later on, we are actually going to be talking about Sword Crit. This is a very, very easy, straightforward guide to do. Should be pretty solid for bosses, especially on softcore. Not something I'd run into Uber Elder and stuff on hardcore with, but a very, very strong beginner guide character. And spin to win is pretty nice. And technically, you can do this build with basically just one button. So for how to play this build, it's pretty straightforward. You hold on right click with Cyclone and kill your enemies. On uh, bosses, you're going to be using Val Double Strike. And you're also going to be using Vault Ancestral Warchief. That's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward and it's a really cozy build. If you're new to following my build guides, make sure you check out the quick video we made that like tell you exactly what to look out for. For example, we use the community fork. So if the build guide isn't loading for you, that's probably because you're not using the community fork. So Slayer actually received a huge buff in 3.13. It might not have seemed like one, but the fact that Endless Hunger and Brutal Fervor got moved around means that you're no longer like, you don't have to take both now to get the overleach. So a lot of people are not going to be taking Endless Hunger anymore. And that frees up that you can, for example, do, uh, you have, you can do Overwhelm, you can do Impact, you can do Masterful Form. You have a lot more room now, which is really cool. So in the words of Steel Mage, heh, Slayer just got its Uber Lab Ascendancy. So we're doing the normal handholdy thing for this build where we are showing you where to put your skill points per level. We also have the ascendancy points in per level. So it should be pretty straightforward. Now early on we're resolute technique with axes. It's uh, pretty easy. You could actually use any weapon for this. You could use swords. Uh, you could use axes. I suggest leveling with blade storm. We'll talk about that in a sec. But you could technically level with like staves or maces and, and great ground slam instead. But uh, at least you, they can take Resto Technique and there's loads of generic two-handed nodes that we are taking while leveling. You don't necessarily have to take axes. But that's generally what I prefer. And uh, the Pantheons for this build is Solaris and Shakari. So early on you could take the two skill points because you're not crit on this build until very end game. And then you can respec for 20 regrets. Or you could take Lyra, especially since you're doing this on Lee start. It's going to be really nice to get the extra resi resist. A little bit of mana regen, etc. It's a really, really not a bad choice and you're losing out on two passives. Um, so Alira is pretty great. Now, if we look at the skills here, you can choose with leveling with Cleave or Ground Slam. Depends what you prefer here, but uh, Ground Slam as well is pretty nice. Just remember that Cleave works with like sharp things like swords and, and axes and Ground Slam is with like maces and, and staves and stuff. Ancestral Protector here at level 4 and then at level 8 you get Maim. And generally, like, that's a pretty great way to get maim. You can also work it in later with, like, your flesh and stone aura to get maim on that. But restoration gets a little bit tricky, and then you'll need things like enlighten. Movement skills is normal with dash, then leap slam. Auras early on, you run skitterbots, flesh and stone, blood, and sand. And, you know, you could, like, drop skitterbots if you feel like mana is the massive pain in the ass. At 24, you can do pride and flesh and stone as well. You could also do blood and sand for a little bit extra damage, but... Since we don't have like a great leeching way and stuff like that early on, uh, mana might be a bit of a pain. And speaking of leech, early on in skill tree, you'll see that we're taking these. This can like be replaced fairly easily by a jewel such as this one, where you have physical attack damage leeched as mana. At level 24, I usually like to switch into Bladestorm. Bladestorm is really, really nice for leveling. I feel like Cyclone is a little bit clunky until you have like a large amount of movement speed. And you have everything and it feels really good then until then blade storm is so nice i usually stay in sand stance just for like attacking like normal white monsters and when you're killing like unique bosses etc i go into the the blood stance so you switch your stances depending on what you're doing um and at 28 using ancestral warchief is really really nice and having extra burst from val ancestral warchief is really cool now if you're doing this at least start getting val herbs to get like val double strike and val ancestral warchief can be annoying and also like fitting all your sockets. If you do have enough like sockets and stuff early, I would say using both Val Ancestral Warchief and Val Double Strike is really, really nice. And actually combining them into having like both 
with then just only two support gems is actually pretty cool too. Gives you a really nice kind of like a tactical nuke for bosses. In the end game here, you see we have Cyclone, Brutality, Melee Fist, Impale, Infuse Channeling, and Fortify. You could technically on Softcore do uh, Fortify and swap that with Pulverize, and you could have um, Leap Slam with Fortify instead if you really want a little bit extra damage and a little bit more AoE. Late game, we're using Pride, Flesh and Stone, Precision, and the level on this is kind of like... You gotta have to tweak it a little bit depending on your level and uh, how much mana you have spare, etc. You want to make sure that using your Cyclone feels good, so make sure you have Mana Leech as well. Worst case scenario, you could use a Enduring Mana Flask, you ideally don't want to. And remember, this craft, very important, and uh, this jewel with the physical attack damage leeches is mana, very important. Only rolls on Radiant Jewels. Late game, you can do Val Ancestral Warchief and Val Double Strike. You do have enough room to have two separate four links for them. If you are struggling with like sockets, you can put them both in one and then you free up a lot of sockets that way. Leap Sam, Faster Attacks, Endurance Charge from Melee Stone, and you can do Blood Magic on that if you are struggling with mana. And you, you do Blood Rage as a way to gain, well, it obviously gives you attack speed, but also Frenzy Charges, which is very nice. The, the important thing for damage on a fist weapon is that you need it to have physical damage and flat physical damage. Ideally, you want a high amount of total PDPS. So not just like combining all the damage, including like, you know, maybe a weapon has like added fire damage, etc. You don't care about that. You might mainly care about the physical DPS on this character. Early on, I'm just going to be looking for like pretty much any axe and something like this would be great. All my other gear is just going to have life and resists. If you can get flat fizz on gear, that's really, really nice. But pretty much very straightforward, just life and resist. All the league starters I try to design, try to have like fairly shit gear and still be working. Now, do make sure that you're resist capped, ideally around Act 4, and remember that you lose resists in Act 5 and in Act 10. And it doesn't really matter where you get your resists, just make sure you use your crafting bench and try to get resist capped as early as possible. Now, there's two different things here for this build. So, early on, because we can take this ascendancy node, Overwhelm, we're basically forcing our weapon to be 8 base crit no matter what, so it makes it so much easier. That means that an exquisite play like this actually had, has 8 base crit, which is how our crit is like decided, and we get pretty decent effective crit multi and, and or sorry, crit chance. Late game, when you actually get something like this that has built-in crit chance, you can see this is 7.5 base crit, then it's no longer really worth having overwhelm anymore. It is a large amount of crit multi for clearing, but it it's, doesn't matter that much for bosses. This lets you be able to get Bane of Legends instead, which is 20% coal, and it's really, really nice. Other than that, Devotus Devotion is a really cool piece of gear. You do struggle a little bit with both Dexterity and Int on this build. Remember that there are both Dex and Int nodes uh, on the skill tree. Devotus Devotion helps with a lot of Dexterity. It gives you movement speed and attack speed, and the movement speed in particular makes it feel really nice for clearing. Uh, an Incursion Chest can be really nice. Or if you want to drop some sockets, you're probably going to have to drop at least your Val Ancestral Warchief uh, and maybe a few more support gems. You could do a Combs Heart. Very, very popular if you want to get above 7k life. And um, yeah, an Incursion Chest like this, really, really nice. And that obviously is still 6 linkable. You would love to get Spite Gloves with, well, ideally resist as well, but then attack speed, flat fizz, and high life. Two-tone boots, and this build really benefits from getting 35 percent movement speed which you can get at item level 86 uh, an amulet would want to look something like this and again just try to get resist forever damage comes secondary surviving is the most important thing you do want some accuracy you probably want around a total of 600 accuracy distributed around your gear or on one piece if you get really lucky rings steel rings are really good especially if you feel like you're getting too much or enough resist somewhere else so high life accuracy and flat fist is really nice here and uh, just a Stygian, Stygian with like high life resist, physical damage is decent. And on your jewel, you really want to get chance to get an onslaught. When we're not using axes, we don't have a great way of getting it. You don't want to waste a flask on it, but getting it from like a murderous side jewel like this is really, really good. Um, your flasks are pretty straightforward. Diamond flask, divine life, lion's word run it. Some people don't like this because it pushes the enemies further away from you, but you also have so much damage that they usually die pretty quickly. And it is a very, very big, large increase of your damage. Other than that, Basil Fast, really, really nice. 
for this, make sure you have a chemist on every Basel Flask you do. When you hit exactly 23% reduced charges, you're getting two uses instead of just one. And Alchemist Quicksilver is pretty much mandatory for playing Cyclone. Now, on this build, you have so many jewel slots, especially endgame and especially when we have the cluster jewels, we're getting an extra two here. Do remember, you can get as much as like 40 or 50 resist on one jewel. So if you are struggling with resist capping while trying to get a lot of damage, that's actually pretty decent too. An important thing to mention is that Cyclone is kind of getting some extra changes and sort of an unspoken of nerf. Usually people are stun immune from Endless Hunger because you have cannot be stunned while leeching. Cyclone is no longer stun immune while spinning, so you actually need stun immunity. You might not need it, you might have enough life and it might not feel bad, but if you are getting stunned and it feels annoying, grab Unwavering Stance, I most likely would. When you have two of the Unwavering Focuses, you should be pretty good with not getting stunned, and you could also throw in Brian King on top of that if you really, really don't want to pick up Unwavering. Other than that, it's like double precise focus, graceful execution is really good, sure-footed striker, and smite the weak. So a lot of power is coming from the cluster jewels here. As far as anointments, anointing Fatal Blade is very, very strong, but if you don't have Opalescence yet, then uh, things like Heartseeker is really, really good for the crit part too. I wouldn't bother um, anointing too much, especially anything expensive when you're playing the Resolute Technique version. I would just be focusing on becoming crit. And do remember, Diamond Skin is such an extremely nice and very cheap anoint that you can grab. Now, a nice thing about this tree is remember you have quite a lot of versatility. If you're on softcore, you could end up dropping more life if you don't feel like you're dying a lot and you are right next to a lot of damage nodes. Um, and the same for if you are on hardcore, you are next to life nodes that you can take as well. So you do have some like flexibility with switching depending on what you want and what you feel the build needs. So now I'm going to do the normal like, Q&A thing I do at the end of guides. Are there too many gems to equip? There shouldn't be, especially once you have a 5 socket weapon, etc. You should have enough that you don't need onset rings. And uh, you could very easily drop like Endurance Charge on Melee Stun or Blood Magic on your Leap Slam. So it should be pretty okay to fit. Worst case scenario for this build, if you are struggling, you can combine your Val Ancestral Warchief and Val Double Strike or even drop one of them entirely. Can the player have mana issues? Yes. Uh, the easiest way to counter this is with a Viridian Jewel that has physical damage leached as mana. Worst case scenario, you could use a Mana Flask too, but that sounds horrible. And there is Mana Leech for attack skills on the tree as well. Useful leveling uniques for this build. If you just look up unique axes and unique swords, etc. There's so many unique weapons and you could actually just jump from unique weapon to unique weapon. You have a lot of unique axes, for example, Limb Split, and that can be upgraded to the Cauterizer, which is insane. Reaper's Pursuit. And, uh, you know, your normal stuff like Wanderlust, Tabula. A lot of people like using Praxis to get minus mana cost of skills, especially if you do want to level the Cyclone. What quality of life and defense and sustain do you have available? Well, you're a Slayer, so you're always overleaching. It feels really good. It's just an enjoyable build to play. Spin to win. What auras are useful and why? So, there's actually, like, more auras than you can use for this build. You have, like, Blood and Sand. Flesh and Stone, you have Dread Banner, Pride, Herald of Purity, there's so many good ones. So if you get a level 3 or level 4 Enlighten, you actually might be able to shoehorn one more damage aura in, uh, especially with playing with your precision level. And there's no real special mechanic that makes this build work. You just spin, and you win. As far as drawbacks to this build, I mean, it's Cyclone. It's not like the craziest boss killer. A lot of people do like doing bosses on this build, but that like largely requires more of an investment. One of the nicest thing about this build is that you're always moving. So you can kind of like dodge the boss while attacking, which is really, really nice. As far as financial hurdles for this build, I think it's going to be pretty cheap. The, the hardest thing is going to be getting a really, really nice weapon. I hope you guys enjoy the build. It was a lot of fun making a true classic such as Cyclone. And I had a lot of requests for Slayer Cyclone, especially with like how to do crit and using the crit node. So hope it serves you well as a starter for 3.13. And I hope the league is a lot of fun and they have a really good, enjoyable time. Thanks for watching. Sub if you liked the video. But more importantly, try to die less than I do.